Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to talk about exponents and order of operations. So in this section we're going to talk about how to evaluate exponential expressions first, then we'll talk about the order of operations and how to evaluate expressions, and then what is an algebraic expression and how do you find its value. So let's start with exponential expressions. So anytime that you have an expression where you have two numbers involved, one smaller than the other, two is called the base, and 3 is called the exponent. And this is called an exponential expression. So you would read this as 2 base 2, or just 2, raised to the third power, or 2 cubed for short. So 3 is the exponent. It tells us how many times you are multiplying the base 2 with itself using multiplication. So this would be base 2 times itself 3 times. So 2 to the third power would be 2 times 2 times 2. So these 2's have names. Those are called factors. So you would have 3 factors of 2. And now what's most important is how do you evaluate it? Well, multiplication. You go from left to right. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 to the third power gives you 8. So let's summarize what we just found out about exponents. So an exponent tells you how many times you multiply the base with itself and it's used as a factor. And exponents always indicate multiplication, never any other operation, always multiplication. So let's do a couple examples. This expression is 3 to the second power, so base is 3, and 2 is the exponent. So you can read this as 3 to the second power or 3 squared for short. So that would mean you would have 3 multiplied with itself. So 3 times 3. Okay, next one is 4 base 4 raised to the third power. So exponent is 3. So this would be read as 4 raised to the third power, or 4 cubed for short. This would mean you have 4 times itself 3 times. So 4 times 4 times 4. And then the last one, 2 to the fourth, the base is 2 this time and the exponent is 4, so you have 2 raised to the 4th power. Now this one doesn't have a, a short way of saying it, it's just 2 to the 4th power. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You have 4 factors of 2. So notice in these three expressions, if you have the exponent is 2, sometimes you can just say squared instead of saying 2 raised to the 2nd power. Or if the exponent is 3, you can say cubed instead of saying raised to the 3rd power. But any power for large you just say raised to the fourth power, raised to the fifth power, and so on. Okay, let's try example one. Evaluating exponential expressions. Simplify each of the following by using repeated multiplication. In other words, multiplying the base with itself. So 5 to second power, or 5 squared, means you have base 5 times itself. So you have two factors, 5, which gives you 5 times 5 is 25. Next problem base 9 to the second power, or 9 squared, gives you 9 times 9, which is 81. Okay, next one. Base 2 raised to the third power, or 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, is 2 times 2 times 2. We did this one earlier. Times 2 is 4, and then 4 times 2 gives you 8. Okay, next problem. 1 to the third power, or 1 cubed. You have 1 is the base, so 1 times itself three times. So three factors of one, you're multiplying, so you get one. And then the last one, you have base two raised to the fifth power. That means two times two times two times two times two. You have five factors of two multiplied together. And if you do this from left to right, two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 32. So notice in this last example, we had exponent was 2, 3, and a 5. We can also have exponents of 0 and 1. So anytime that you have numbers, 0 and 1, as exponents, they have their own definition. So definition with exponents 0 and 1. Any number where you have an exponent is 1 means that you're raising the base to the first power. Anytime that happens, the answer is always the base. So the base is itself. It stays the same. So in other words, if you have a representing any number, 
a, any number, to the first power will always be a. So in other words, you have one factor of the base, and that's it. So you don't have any multiplication to do at all. It just stays a. Now, if you have an exponent of 0, in other words, you're raising the base to the 0 power, the answer is always 1. So in other words, if the base is a non-zero number, a to the 0 power is equal to 1 by definition. That's always true. The only exception is the base has to be non-zero. That means you can't have 0 raised to the 0 power. That's undefined. It's not actually a real number. So let's try example 2. These should be really quick. 5 raised to the first power stays itself, 5. So the base stays 5. 9 to the first power. The base is 9, so it stays 9. 4 to the 0 power. The base is 4, so it's not 0. 4 to the 0 power is 1, by definition. 8 to the 0 power. That's 1, by definition. And 1 to the 0. Well, the base is equal to 1, so as long as the base isn't 0, we can use this rule. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 to the 0 power is 1. So like I said, those are pretty quick to do, as long as you remember the, the rules between exponent 0 and the exponent is 1. Okay, so now that we finished out talking about exponential expressions, let's move on to order of operations. So the reason why we have order of operations, suppose that you have several different operations in one expression. Well, which operation do you do first? Which one do you do second? And if you have more than two, which one do you do first, second, and third? Well, I know that I've seen on social media there are these mathematical expressions that people post as memes, and it always seems like, is the answer this or is the answer that? Well, the reason why there's only one real correct answer is you must use the order of operations correctly. So let's say you have this expression. Mathematical expression 4 plus 5 times 2. Which operation do you do first? Well, you could do 4 plus 5 and get 9 and then multiply by 2 and get 18. Or do you do 5 times 2 and get 10, and then 10 plus 4 and get 14? So is the answer 18 or is the answer 14? Well, it depends on are you using the order of operations correctly. Anytime that you are trying to evaluate mathematical expressions, you must do the operations in this order. So number one, if the expression has any grouping symbols, grouping symbols mean parentheses or square brackets, all parentheses and square brackets do is group operations together. So if you have parentheses, whatever operations inside the parentheses, you must use the order of operations inside the parentheses first. If you have brackets, square brackets, you must do the order of operations inside the brackets first. And if you have a fraction bar, now that's not a grouping symbol, but the fraction bar does separate the numerator from the denominator. So you must do the operation in the numerator and the operation in the denominator separately. Once you have the first step finished, the next step is to evaluate any expression that involves exponents. So any expression that involves exponents are the ones that we were just talking about. So you do those seconds after the grouping symbols are finished. Once the exponents have been evaluated, then you can do all the multiplication and all the division but you must do them from left to right. So you start from the left of the expression. If you see multiplication first, you do multiplication first. If you see division first, you do division first. But you go from left to right. So you could do division before multiplication. It depends on which one you see first going from left to right. And then number four, do addition and subtraction. Also from left to right. So again, if you see subtraction first, then addition going from left to right, you actually would do subtraction first, then addition. So these are the four steps to the order of operations. You must do grouping symbols first, then exponents, then multiplication and division from left to right, then addition and subtraction from left to right. Well, there's an easy way to remember these four steps. So a useful way to remember the order of operations
is P-E-M-D-A-S, or PEMDAS. So this gives you an acronym of telling you what steps should be first, second, third, and so on. So P stands for parentheses. So that means all the grouping symbols must be done first. Then you do exponents for the E. Multiplication and division. Now keep in mind, you could do division before multiplication as long as you do it from left to right. And then the A and the S, addition and subtraction. Again, also from left to right. So let's go back to the problem that we were talking about earlier. We had 4 plus 5 times 2. That was the mathematical expression. We had the answer was 18 or 14. Well, if you use the order of operations correctly, you'll have 5 times 2. Multiplication must be done first. So you get 5 times 2 is 10. Then you do addition second. 10 plus 4 gives you 14. So 14 is the correct answer using the order of operations. So let's try example 3. We're going to use the order of operations. Simplify each of the following expressions using the order of operations. So let's build up our difficulty as we go. So let's try the first problem. 5 times 7, subtract 3 times 6. If you do subtraction first, you're doing the order of operations in the wrong order. So 5 times 7 is 35. Then 3 times 6 is 18. Keep the subtraction between the two. And then 35 subtract 18 is 17. So 17 is the correct answer, using the order of operations. Okay, let's try number two. This time you see that there's parentheses involved, so we actually have to do the first step. So the first step is grouping symbols. Whatever operations inside the parentheses, you must do that first. So seven stays the same, plus three, and then parentheses. So there's no operation between the three and the parentheses. Six plus four gives you 10. So anytime if there's no operation between a number and a parentheses, the parentheses means multiplication. So now we have 7 plus 3 times 10. So we have to do multiplication first or next. So 7 plus 30. And now 7 plus 30 is 37. Okay, number 3. This time we have multiplication, addition, division, and exponents. So which of the operations should we be doing first? Well, I don't have any grouping symbols, so I don't have to worry about that first step, but I do have exponents. So let's do the exponents first. So 6 stays the same. 3 squared is 3 times 3, or 9, plus 64. Divide. We haven't, do, we haven't done division or multiplication yet, so just keep all those operations the same. 2 to the fourth power. That would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You have four factors of 2. That is 16, and then you have to subtract 2 at the end. All right, so the first step is finished. We did the exponents. Now we do multiplication and division from left to right. So 6 times 9 is 54, plus 64 divided by 16. Well, there is another operation that we can do. 64 divided by 16 is 4, and then you have to subtract 2. So now we've taken care of all the multiplication and division problems. So now we only have addition and subtraction and do that from left to right as well. So 54 plus 4 is 58. Then subtract 2 and you get 56. Okay, let's try number 4 now. This time there's several grouping symbols. You have square brackets and you also have parentheses. So the first step is always the grouping symbols. So notice that there are square brackets. Inside the square brackets, there's another parentheses. With grouping symbols, you always work your way inside out. So let's do that. You have 5 plus 3, square bracket, 24, subtract, 5. Now we have inside the parentheses, which is inside the square brackets. 6 subtract 2, which is 4. So 4 is inside the parentheses, and then you have the square bracket. So we did the in, innermost parentheses first, 6 minus 2. So now, notice that we're still inside these square brackets. We haven't removed the grouping symbols yet. 
we have 24 subtract 5 times 4. So 5 plus 3, square bracket, 24 subtract, do multiplication. So 24 subtract 20, keep the grouping symbols. And now inside the square brackets, you have 24 subtract 20, and that's 4. So 5 plus 3, square bracket, 4. So that seems like a very long first step, but we took care of all the grouping symbols. We did the parentheses first because it's inside the square brackets, and then we did all the operations inside the square brackets to get 4. So now we only have multiplication and addition left. So we'll do multiplication first. 3 times 4 is 12, so 5 plus 12, and then do addition last, 17. Okay, number 5. This time there's grouping symbols again. So inside the parentheses you have 4.2 plus 0 0.03. Let's do that first. So 0 0.05 times, because the parentheses means multiplication, 4.2 plus 0 0.03. That would give you 4.23. And now, again, since there's no operation between 0 0.05 and the parentheses, that means multiplication. So 0 0.05 times 4.23 gives you 0 0.2115. Okay, number six. This time you have absolute value and exponents and multiplication and addition. So inside the absolute value, notice you have exponents. So do exponents first. You have absolute value of three times two to the third power or two cubed. That's two times two times two. We've done that a couple times now. That's eight plus 2 times 3 squared. We did that one earlier as well. 3 times 3 is 9, and that's all inside the absolute value. So we're still inside the absolute value. We have 3 times 8 and 2 times 9. Do multiplication from left to right. So absolute value, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2 times 9 is 18, inside the absolute value. And then 24 plus 18 is still inside the absolute value. It's 42, and then the absolute value of 42 is 42. Okay, let's try this last problem, number 7. 4.8 plus 12 times 3.2 squared. So again, you have exponents, but no grouping symbols. There's no operation inside those parentheses. So you can really skip the first step. You go straight to exponents. So this means 4.8 plus 12 times 3.2 times 3.2 gives you 10.24. So 4.8 plus 12 times 10.24. So now we have multiplication. 12 times 10.24. You have 4.8 plus 122.88. And now finally add to get 127.68. So this gives you an idea of how to use the order of operations. You have parentheses and grouping symbols first. You have exponents second. Multiplication and division going from left to right. That's the third step. And then finally addition and subtraction also going from left to right. All right, example four. Let's use the order of operations in this word problem. We're going to figure out how much our paycheck should be. So suppose that Sally earns $7.25 for each of the first 36 hours that they work in one week, and then they earn $10.88 in overtime pay for each additional hour they work in the same week. So how much money should Sally earn if they work 42 hours in one week? Well, it doesn't seem like order of operations, but you would definitely not add 36 hours and 42 hours. That's not making any sense. What you should do is break this up into the first 36 hours because you're making one rate for the first 36 hours and you're making a different rate for, the, for any additional hour after 36. So let's do that. Pay for the first 36 hours. Well, you make $7.25 and you would multiply by 36 because you're making $7.25 per hour. So for 36 hours worked, 
you would make $261. Now, we also worked six hours more than 36. So we have overlook or overtime pay. So pay for the next six hours. Now we're not make, we're not working 42 hours beyond 36. We're only working six more hours beyond 36. So you pay or you make ten dollars and eighty-eight cents times six additional hours. Sixty-five dollars and twenty-eight cents for that overtime pay. And so that means Sally will earn a total. Of, if you add those two together, those two amounts, you get $326.28 for working 42 hours. So we use order of operations. We had to multiply $7.25 times 36 and $10.88 times 6 before we add it at the end. So multiplication always comes before addition. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about in this section is what's called algebraic expressions and how to find the value of an algebraic expression. So any expression that contains variables along with numbers and operations or symbols is called an algebraic expression. So an algebraic expression is a combination of numbers, variables, operation symbols, and potentially grouping symbols as well. So anytime that you're working with algebraic expressions, make sure you are using the order of operations. So each of these are examples of expressions, algebraic expressions. 3x subtract 5. Notice that there's no equal sign. It's just 3x minus 5. So you have numbers, operations, and a variable. 4 times t squared subtract 9. That's an algebraic expression. x squared subtract 6xy plus y squared. We'll see that later in the course. Negative 15x squared y to the fourth z to the fifth power. That's an algebraic expression. Even fractions. a squared minus 9 divided by a subtract 3. Now that's an algebraic expression. You're not solving anything. It's just an algebraic expression. x minus 3 in parentheses times, in parentheses, x plus 2. So you have grouping symbols in this expression, all divided by 4x. So those are all examples of expressions. Now, if you have expressions equal to another expression, then you have what's called an equation. So here's an example of an equation. 3x minus 5, that is an algebraic expression. 2x plus 7, that's an algebraic expression, but then equals between the two algebraic expressions, this entire expression is called an equation. 2x squared minus 5x equals 12. That's an equation. x divided by 3 plus 5 divided by 2 equals a half. That's an equation. You notice that there's an equal sign in each one of these. That's what makes it an equation rather than an expression. Okay, And then also, you could have what's called an inequality symbol, which we'll see later in the course. So instead of an equal sign, you might have what's called an inequality symbol. So an inequality could be greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to. Any of those four possibilities. So 3 times the parentheses, x subtract 4, greater than or equal to, negative 2. That's an inequality, not an equation and not just an expression. It's an inequality. 2x squared subtract 2x minus 8, less than or equal to 12. So you have an inequality symbol that makes it an inequality. And then x minus 4 divided by x plus 3 is less than 0. You have an inequality symbol. So each of these three are inequalities. So there's a difference between expressions, there's a difference between equations because they have equals, and there's a difference between inequalities where you have inequality symbols between expressions. So what we're going to do in this last problem in the section is to find the value of an algebraic expression. 
So let's say you have an expression like 3 times t minus 4. This t, this variable, can be any real number. So you can substitute in any value that you want in for the value of t. But when you substitute in a value into an expression, always enclose it in parentheses. So the t could be negative 8, for instance. So you can replace the t with negative 8 in parentheses. So 3, and then inside the parentheses, negative 8 for the, instead of a t, then subtract 4. So now notice that this becomes a problem that you can solve using the order of operations. You do 3 times negative 8, that's negative 24. Negative 24, subtract 4, gives you negative 28. So we found the value of an algebraic expression if we knew the value of t. So let's try example 5. Evaluate an algebraic expression. So find the value of the expression 2x plus 5y minus 10 when x is equal to 4 and y is negative 3. So to find the value, we need to substitute x equals 4 and y equals 3, y equals negative 3, into the expression. in parentheses. So again, anytime you do substitution, you always replace the variable inside parentheses with the number you're replacing it with. So 2x plus 5y minus 10 becomes 2 times x. So x is replaced inside the parentheses with 4 plus 5 times y, so replace y with negative 3 inside parentheses. Now notice, if you don't have parentheses, you would, just, you would look at this and go 5 minus 3. So the parentheses is important, so make sure you enclose the number inside the parentheses. Then subtract 10. So now this becomes order of, of operations problem. You do 2 times 4 is 8, plus 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, and then you have to track 10. So now you have, op you have the operations of addition and subtraction. Do them from left to right. So 8 plus negative 15, that will give you negative 7. Then you subtract 10, and that is negative 17. So this algebraic expression would be equal to negative 17 when x equals 4 and y equals negative 3. And now the last problem, example 6, evaluating algebraic expressions. We're going to find the value of parentheses a plus 4 squared, a squared plus 16, and a squared plus 8a plus 16, when a is negative 2, a is 0, and a is 3, all separate. So this is kind of like a table. So on the left side we have the values of a that they're telling us to use, and then we have a column for each of these three algebraic expressions. So let's do the exact same thing that we did in the last example. Replace the a with the value in each of these expressions. So a is replaced with negative 2 plus 4, and it's inside the parentheses that's being squared. So do what's inside the parentheses first according to the order of operations. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, and then 2 to the second power gives you 4. Okay, let's do the next value of a. So when a equals 0, replace the value of a with a 0. So 0 plus 4 to the second power. That is 0 plus 4. Do that first. You get 4 squared. And 4 times 4 is 16. And then the last value of a is 3. So 3 plus 4 all to the second power. Again, add what's inside the parentheses first. You get 7. And that's still squared. And 7 times 7 is 49. So you should get 4, 16, and 49 when you plug in negative 2, 0, and 3. So let's do the same thing. Replace the a in parentheses with negative 2, square it, then add 16. So negative 2 squared is negative 2 times itself. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, positive 4, plus 16, and that is 20. So notice that these two algebraic expressions are not the same. 
because you don't get the same value when you plug in a. They're not equal. If you plug a negative 2 into this expression, you get 4. If you plug a negative 2 into this other expression, you get 20. So these two algebra expressions are not equal. So in other words, you can't just square the a and square the 4. That's not equal. So next value, plug in 0. You get 0 squared plus 16. 0 times 0 is 0, plus 16 gives you 16. 3 squared plus 16. 3 squared is 9, plus 16 gives you 25. The first time we got 49, so that's another reason why they're not equal. All right, one more algebraic expression. Same values, so try this one yourself. If you replace the a with negative 2, for each of these a's, in parentheses, see what you come up with. Then do the same thing for a equals 0, and then a equals 3. So pause the video and figure out what these values would actually give you. All right, so if you plug in negative 2 in for a into this last algebraic ex expression, you get 4. Well, that matches what we got from the first algebraic expression when we plugged in negative 2. We got 4. Right? Then you plug in a equals 0, you get 16. That matches, again, the first expression when you plug in 0. And when you plug in a equals 3, you got 49 and for the first algebraic expression, and you also get 49 for this last algebraic expression. So what this means is that it looks like if you have a plus 4 in parentheses squared, it might be equal to a squared plus 8a plus 16 if you simplified. Because it looks like we're going to get the same values if we plug in the same value of a. So when we study polynomials later in the course, we're going to see that the expression a plus 4 in parentheses squared and a squared plus 8a plus 16, these are equivalent expressions, which means that whatever value you plug in for a, you will always get the same value for both expressions. But a squared plus 16 is not equivalent to the other two. So this gives you an idea of how to evaluate exponential expressions, how to use the order of operations correctly, and then also how to evaluate algebraic expressions. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about adding real numbers.